Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Donald Wayne Dickman here. A blessed Sunday to all of you all out there. I pray that you all are keeping well in the Lord. I also pray that you are running your race faithfully with your eyes set on Jesus Christ. Today, my message is entitled, How to Deal with Life's Wellies. The text is taken from Psalm chapter 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In order to apply the meaning of Psalms 23 verse 4 to our lives, we first need to look at the context in which it was written. Psalms 23 was written by David and in it he reflects on how God has cared for him. He uses poetic language to paint a picture of God's care, guidance and protection. The primary metaphor used in this Psalms is that of a shepherd caring for his sheep. This beautifully shows God's relationship with his people, with you and I. The narrative of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the Old Testament is one of courage and faith in the face of seemingly great danger. Facing the threat of a fiery furnace, these three Hebrew men refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar's golden statue. They told Nebuchadnezzar, our God is able to save us. But even if our God does not save us, we still will not bow down to this statue. Despite their Danger, despite the threat to their life, they stood firm in their faith, trusting that God would be with them no matter the outcome. Their strong faith or steadfast faith in God's presence, even the darkest of times, reflects the essence of God's comfort in Psalms 23 verse 4. In Psalms 23 verse 4, the valley of the shadow of death is a powerful metaphor that symbolizes life's darkest and most challenging and trying times. This imagery evokes a sense of fear and uncertainty, which is a shared human experience as we all face various trials and tribulation throughout our lives, the worst encourages us to maintain our faith, knowing that God is always by our side. What does the valley of life mean in accordance to the Bible? Valleys. Valleys symbolize life's lows, trials, and hardships. Just as people encounter God on mountains, they also seek His help and comfort in valleys. Biblical scholars speculate that the valleys of life represent the low times people face in life. They suggest that when one goes through the valley of life, it means that things are not so great. You may go through unpleasant and hurtful moments. It could be physical suffering, loss, sorrow, emotional despair, and even temptations to sin. One of the examples the Bible shows us that represents the valley of life 
that represents the valley of life is the story of Joseph recorded in Genesis chapter 37 verse 18 to 38. We read about how Joseph's brothers conspired to kill him, beat him and threw him in a pit. They sold him into slavery instead of killing him. Joseph became an Egyptian prisoner and was falsely accused of committing certain crimes. Since this story shows the lowest point of his life, many people suggest that Joseph went through the valley of life. The valley of life could also mean discouragement or depression. It could also be doubt in your mind telling you that you will never overcome a certain problem. The Bible suggests that the enemy tends to make people believe that God is not present when they go through the valley of life. As you read the Bible, we will discover there are many times people went through various valleys of life. Like how is mentioned in Psalms 23 verse 4. The valley of sickness, people like Job went through, Hezekiah went through. And even we read in the New Testament how the woman with the issue of blood and many more. Job passed through this valley of sickness and suffering. Afflicted from head to toe in Job chapter 2, 1 to 7. So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord and smote Job from the sole of his foot unto his crown. It was not because of Job's wickedness. It was not because of his sin. But Job went through this valley of sickness. The valley of trials in 1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. They are necessary to try our faith. We are not to think them strange. God wants and expects to have a tried people. After several trials, we come forth as gold. As gold is refined with fire, we go through these valleys of trial to be refined, to be matured. The valley of persecution, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. Paul went to various persecution. He was stoned, he was beaten, he went through shipwreck, he was dragged out of city for dead. He went through various things. At the end of the day, he said, I fought the good fight. I kept the faith. I finished the race. Acts 14, 19, 20 says, And there came certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. How be it? as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up, and came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. The Valley of Doubts. Mark 16, 14, after he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. The Valley of Doubt we go through. The Valley of Death. Jesus went through the Valley of Death and rose from the dead and lighted up the valley for all of us. Hebrews 9, 27, 28 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he hear the second time without sin unto salvation. The valley of depression. Elijah went through the valley of depression. The valley of financial crisis. The widow woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 went through a valley of financial crisis when God came to. So we need to realize today it is not always mountaintop experiences. The Bible makes that perfectly clear. Therefore, we all might as well prepare ourselves for the valleys of life.
in Psalm chapter 23, verse 1 to 3, he says very clearly, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Here we see David describing God as providing rest, guiding him down the right path and refreshing his soul. It's a picture of green pastures and calm waters. But things are about to change. Things are about to take a turn as we read verse 4. In verse 4, we see that the shepherd leads not only to still waters, but also to troubled waters. We see this theme continue throughout the rest of Psalms 23. David shows how God is with him in the good and we lead him through the darkest of times. Despite facing these daunting circumstances, the psalmist expresses unwavering trust and confidence in God's presence and protection. This is the most famous verse in the Bible. It paints a powerful picture of God's unwavering presence, guidance and protection. Psalms 23 verse 4 reassures us as believers that even in life's darkest and most challenging moments, God is still with us. And not only is he with us, he will lead us through. We are going to look today at how we can live with the same trust in God. We are going to look at how we can live with the same trust and faith in God even today. This verse, Psalms 23 verse 4, has so much for us today. And I pray that you will open your hearts and give God this valuable time as you listen to this sermon so that the sermon will encourage you. The sermon will lift you up. The sermon will strengthen you so that you can go through the life's valleys that you face. The darkest of valleys that you're going through. As you hear this sermon, I pray that you'll be encouraged. You'll be lifted up. You'll be strengthened to go through. The first important step we can learn on how to deal with life's valleys is. We got to walk through. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The first thing we got to do, we got to accept the fact, the reality that we are facing a valley. Some of us live in denial. When you're going through a valley, you say, I'm not going through a valley. When you're having a sickness, you say, I'm not having a sickness. When you're having a financial problem, you refuse to admit you're having a financial problem. When you're going through depression, you refuse to tell people you're going through depression. When you're having an addiction or having a marital problem, difficulties to face life, difficulties to face challenges, you deny. You act as if it don't exist. And because of that, it's so hard for you to walk through. So the first and important lesson we got to come to a reality that yes, I'm facing this problem. Yes, I got this difficulty. Yes, I got this valley that I got to go through and I need help. You got to accept the fact you got to be honest. For a drug addict to get help, they got to be honest and say, I am a drug addict. For an alcoholic to get help, he got to say, I am an alcoholic. For a person caught up with secrets or, or a person caught up with lust, immorality, they got to say, yes, I got this addiction. I got this habit. I need help. Then and then only you can proceed. But we got to accept the reality of the valley that we are facing. 
That is the first step you got to accept and you got to walk through it. So some people choose not to accept it. So you take a jar of hot water. You put an egg in the hot water. If you leave it long enough, the egg becomes hard. If you put vegetables in a jar of hot water, it becomes soft. If you put coffee in a jar of hot water, the aroma of the coffee fills the house. So who are you? What kind of person are you when you go through the valleys? Are you the kind who refuse to accept, refuse to allow God to deal with you, that you come so hard and you reject every help, you reject every person and you try to do it your way? Oh, you are kind of people who just crumble with the pressures of life. But here, we need to be the kind of people like coffee. The best of us come out when we go through these valleys. Because we allow God to deal with us. That's why it's important for us to walk. We don't run to the valley. We don't try to skip the valley. We don't try to jump through the valley. That's why we go through stages when we go through our studies. We go through standard one to standard six, form one to form five, and then we go to our A levels of form six, and then we progress to our university year one, year two, year three, year four, and then we do our masters, and then we do our PhD. We don't try to jump to do our PhD when we miss all the basic lessons. We mix the building, the dealing, the training so that we grow from step to step. Similarly, in a spiritual life, we gotta allow God to deal with us, where God takes us to stages where God allows us to go through valleys of life, where God allows us to go through the teaching from people. Sometimes it, not, it might not be comfortable. We are not in the position where we like to be, but we're going to learn to wait on God's timing, on the Kairos time, at the right time. Then you come out. That's why the Bible says here, Ye do I walk through. So the first thing is we got to walk when you walk, you learn. You learn of things that God wants to teach you. You can stop and smell the roses on the way. You can stop and enjoy life. You can stop and be a blessing to people. You can stop and learn and be taught. When you walk, you don't trip over. You don't fall. You don't skip things where God wants you to skip. When you walk... It means that you'll be walking away from the things of all and you'll be going forward. But you keep walking. You got to keep walking. Certain people you got to leave behind. Certain habits you got to leave behind. Certain addictions you got to leave behind. And believe me, when you are in the valley, you are willing to leave behind. When you are on the mountaintop, you are not willing. But when you are in the valley, you are facing trials. We are facing difficulties. It's time where you leave behind things you are not supposed to to have and you go for it and learn things that you're supposed. You learn to pray. You learn to fast. You learn to bend your knees. You learn to read the Bible. You learn to go to church regularly. You keep walking. You keep doing so that you keep growing. And eventually you walk through. Yea, do I walk through. When you read the Bible here, when he talks about walking through, it means that where I am now, I am not where I'm going to end up. That's what it means. I'm walking through. I'm walking through the situation. Winston Churchill gave a good quote. He said, when you're going through hell, keep moving. When you're going through the valleys of life, keep moving. Keep progressing. Keep learning. Keep growing. In the valley, God is teaching you lessons. Be humble, be broken, learn the lesson. You got to give up, give up certain things. You got to learn, you learn certain things. The faster you learn, the faster you come out the valley. You come out more powerful. You come out more in tune with God. You come out more matured. You come out with anointing. You come out with the wisdom where you're prepared to do greater things for Jesus Christ. But you got to keep walking through the valley. Amen. So it's important for us to keep walking. Don't stay in the valley. 
Don't camp in the valley. Don't give up everything and say, okay, this is my life. Here I am. I'm going to die here. And you never come out. And remember, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. But you got to stay in that train to reach the end. So you got to keep going. I want to encourage you today. No matter what valley you're facing, it might be a sickness. It might be depression. It might be marital problems. It might be addiction habits. It might be challenges in your job, in your business, in your spiritual life. You keep doing what God told you to do. You might not see the light. You might not see the breakthrough today, but you keep doing it. You keep improving. You keep pressing on. You keep training. You keep exercising. You keep learning. And believe me, you will reach your goal, but you got to keep walking. Don't give up. Don't walk backwards. Don't allow people to draw you away. Don't allow people to speak into your life that you stop walking according to what God wants you to do and you walk in accordance to what they want you to do because they have their own selfish purposes. You keep doing what God called you to do and you will walk through the valley. Psalms 37 verse 23, 24 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the law. And he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholded him with his hand. Jude 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep him from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So walking, so walking through, while you're walking through, learn from the Lord. Get the lessons, be humble, be teachable. At the Kairos time, at the right time, you'll come out ready to take on greater tasks. You'll be empowered. You'll be willing to let go of things that you were not willing earlier. You're willing to apply the lessons, the teaching that God has taught you in the valleys. Desert people don't desert. Valley helps to empower you, refine you like how gold is refined with fire. The second step on how to deal with life's valleys is fear not. The Bible says in verse 4, Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk to the valley of death, I will fear no evil. We got to deal with fear. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, God had not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and a sound mind. We got to remind ourselves every now and then that fear is not from God. The only fear that we can have from God is reverential fear of God. Other than that, it's from the devil. Fear and faith, they are inversely proportional. If you are having fear in your life, you are having so much anxiety in your life, you have so much of trouble in your life, it means your faith level is so low. If your faith level is so high, Fear is dealt with, anxiety is dealt with, trouble is dealt with. So today we need to realize God has not given you a spirit of fear. That's why the Bible tells you, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So it's important for us to not to allow fear to creep into our life. It's important to deal with the fear at the very start. Nip it at the bud because it will grow. It will paralyze you. It, it will terrify you. It will destroy the vision God has for you. It will destroy the purpose that God has for you. It will hinder you from walking in obedience because you will stop living by faith and you start living by reason and logic and the cloud if you allow fear to creep into your life. And there are many Christians in this world who are living in fear. And because of that, they never see the miraculous. They never see the supernatural. They are never able to walk on the water like Peter walked on the water. They are never able to call fire from heaven. They are never able to challenge the enemy because they are so limited by fear. So I encourage you today, Deal with fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, we all will walk through the valley of shadow of death. The valley of the shadow of death. But we need to guard ourselves from allowing fear to creep in. 
I fear no evil, David is saying. And that's what we must say. I fear no evil. I fear no threats of the devil. I fear no death. I fear no sickness. I fear no poverty. I fear no men. I fear no crowd. I fear no politician. I fear nothing other than I give reverence and fear to God. Remember, if you read the Bible, there are many people who did a record. They say 365 times. The word fear not is written in the Bible. For every day, there's one fear not for you to deal with fear. So I encourage you, guard yourself against fear. Because fear is the number one way the enemy cripples us. The number one way the enemy hinders us from stepping out and doing great things for the Lord. When I was called into full-time ministry and God called me to go into full-time by faith, not taking any salary. I mean, that was my biggest fear. How am I going to have money to pay for the expenses of my children, our family, the house, the cars, our traveling, and then the church and everything else? There's so many things that put fear on me, but I had to slowly but surely build faith enough through my wife and other people that I made that decision to go forth and do God's work by faith in God. Provided till today, God never failed. But if I allowed fear to, to hold me, fear to cripple me, I would never have taken that step of faith. And now for 25 years, I've been doing this work. 25 years, I've been living by faith. 25 years, I've been ministering God's word, preaching hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of souls being saved throughout the world. Many people be healed of incurable sicknesses, cancer healed, people who cannot walk, stood up and walk, holding the heart, get healed. And many, many more miracles came about. Why? Because I decided to walk by faith and not by sight. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I'll help thee, yea, I'll uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Psalms 34 verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. First John 4, 4 says, He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Exodus 20, 20, Moses said unto people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. Isaiah 54 verse 4, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. Joshua 1 9, have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. The Bible clearly teaches to live by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. If you look at the people in the Old Testament, you look at Joshua and Caleb, they didn't allow the fear of the enemy to cripple them. They went and spied out the land along with 10 other people. 10 people, 10 spies came back and gave negative report. They say they saw giant, they saw the city walled. Yes, the land is healthy. Yes, the fruits are so huge and, and blessed, but we cannot take the land. We cannot. They are like giants. We are like grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb came back and looked through the eyes of faith. They said, as long as God said we can take the land, we can take the land. And that's the kind of people we must be. Not people of fear, but of faith. We must be like Daniel, who refused to bow down to the instruction of the leaders. They said, you can't pray during this few months. But Daniel refused. He opened his windows and prayed at his regular time. They threatened to throw him the lion's den. He still opened his windows and prayed. They threw him in the lion's den, but the lion did not eat him up. Why? God was with him. Fear not! The Bible is telling you today. People might threaten you. People might use logic and try to put fear. But you are going to trust in your supernatural God. So fear not. The third point on how to deal with life's valleys is remember that God is with you. In verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. And this is so important. Why you can live without fear? Why you can live in boldness? It's because you know God is with you. You must remember that God is with you. God is the God of the mountain. God is the God of the valley. Remember that in 1st King chapter 20 verse 28. This is what the Lord says. Because the Arameans think the Lord is a God of the hills and not a God of the valleys. 
I will deliver this vast army into your hands and you will know that I am the Lord. God displayed that he is not only the God of the mountains, but the God of the valleys. Many times the devil and his cohorts believe that only on top of the mountains, you will see the gods. But here, God is declaring he's the God of the mountains and God of the valleys. Even though you're going through difficulties, you're going through persecution, you're going through trials, you're going through sicknesses, you're going through lack, you're going to demonic attack, you're going to depression. God is still God of the valleys and he will help you. And all you have to do is keep pressing on. All you have to do is keep moving on. Is all you have to do is keep believing God. Keep reading the Bible. Keep going to church. Keep praying. Keep believing for a miracle. And at the Kairos time, you will see God will cause a breakthrough. In the meantime, God will sustain thee. God will empower thee to go through. God will be with you so you are able to go through the fire. Go through the lion's den and come out not touched but blessed. Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, Psalms 24 verse 1. If you read Psalms 23, you will see it is repeated over and over and over that God was with David. God is with us. We read verse 5. He says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, in the midst of the enemies. God prepares a table for his children where you will commune with God. You will have an intimate relationship with God and no force of the enemy can touch you. Why? Because God is there. If God is there, the enemy cannot touch you. If the presence of God is there, nothing can touch you. No sickness can touch you. No demonic attack can touch you. No curse can touch you. No plan of the enemy can prosper. God is there. God prepares a table in the presence of the enemies. And then in verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. God's presence, the Old Testament, they will not move until unless the ark goes before them. The ark represents God's presence. And that's how we should be as a people, as children of God. In everything we do, we need to ensure that God's presence is there. It was God leading. It was God's way. It was God's word. And I'm praying and I'm seeking God. And until I can sense God's power and presence with me, then and then only I'm going to preach. Then and then only I'm going to worship. Then and then only I'm going to do deliverance. Because I need God's presence to do God's work. I cannot do it with my own intellect. Nothing will happen. The only way I can see victory, I can see deliverance, I can see healing, I can see miracles, I can see souls and the kingdom is through the presence of God. So we need God with us. In verse 3, he says, He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness. God is the one that can restore when you are down, when you have, you are feeling depressed, when you're feeling broken, when there's so much of fear in you that you cannot lift yourself to face another day. God is the one who will restore you. It's not man. Man can motivate you for a while, but God and God only can restore you. The Lord restores my soul. He, that's why we need God. I can go through the valley of the shadow of death. I will not fear any evil because God is with me. He is with me. He is with me in the times of the worst of sickness. Doctors might say incurable, but as long as God is with me, I can go through. When I'm having attacked by demonic spirits when charms are put on me I can still go on because God is with me and God will liberate me and set me free if I'm having depression if I'm having addiction if I'm caught up with habits God is with me and through God every habit every addiction will be broken and every depression got to go so God is so important so what we need to do we need to grab on to God and never let him go we need to seek God with all our heart to find God. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to spend time reading the word, meditating on the word, allowing the Holy Spirit to bring a word of life and speak into our life because God and God alone is the one that can set you free, that can give you a meaningful life, a quality life that can cause breakthroughs. It's God. And we need to give God our best. Verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leadeth me beside the still. It's God. God will allow me to lie down in beautiful green pastures and leadeth me beside still waters. Verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So if you have the presence of God, you have all you need. That's why Jesus told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they endured with power from on high. To wait until you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Baptized and powered to do the work of God, to do the work of mission. So that you preach with boldness, you prophesy, your young men will see vision, old men will dream dreams, miracles will happen. You won't be timid, you'll be bold. Wait for the Holy Spirit. And you and I need to be baptized over and over in the Holy Spirit. You and I need to have a fresh, fresh experience of Pentecost over so that we'll go forth with boldness. We'll not be shy. We'll not be afraid. We'll not be pressed down with fear that we cannot do this, cannot do that. We will go forth with boldness. We'll roar like lions for Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I'll uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Romans 8, 31, if God is with us, who can be against us? Deuteronomy 31, verse 8, be strong and of good courage, fear not. No, be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he is he that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Matthew 28, verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Hebrews 13 verse 5, I will not leave thee nor forsake thee. Romans 8, 38, 39, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am persuaded neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 John 4, 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. John 14, 16, I'll pray the Father that he give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. Amen. So we read verse 4 again. In Psalms 23, verse 4, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. When we read verse 4, the language changes. In the verses earlier, David was referring to God. He was talking about God. But in verse 4, David was talking to God. So many times when you go through the valley, what the valley does, the valley draws you closer to God. The valley causes you to have an intimate relationship with God. You don't know about God only, but now you know God. Because when you are facing valleys, you tend to seek God more. You tend to spend more time with God. You tend to be broken, to be humble. So the ground is so ready to receive what God has for you. That's why it's important for us to go through the valleys and to be teachable and broken and be willing to hear. Because when you go through the valleys, it's times when you don't talk about God, but you start to talk to God. When you come out of the valley, you're not just talking about God, but you are having a personal intimate relationship with God. And when you have a personal intimate relationship with God, you come out powerful, almighty, because you're hearing from God and you're speaking with the anointing and power and miracles happen. So we need the valley and through the valley be open so that you're able to have an intimate relationship. Abraham had an intimate relationship when he went through the valley to offer his son. Everyone had an intimate relationship. David had an intimate relationship when he was running from King Saul. He was hiding. His life was threatened. Each time you go through an intimate relationship, each time you go through a valley, like Elijah was threatened for his life, he almost got depressed. And during that time, during that valley experience, he could hear from God again. So it's so important for you and I in the valley to be able not only to hear about God, not only to talk about God, but to start to talk to God, to have an intimate relationship with God. The fourth point on how to deal with life's valley is the weapons or tools for us to use while in the valley. The Bible says in verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So, 
David here is declaring he fears no evil. Why? God is with him, number one. Number two, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David knows the purpose of the rod. David knows the purpose of the staff. David has experienced the purpose of the rod and the staff. And he's seen God protecting, providing, guiding them, sustaining them. He's seen. So through the rod and the staff, it reminds David of who God is. Even in the midst of the valley, he looks at the rod and the staff of the shepherd and he gets comforted. Why? The rod and the staff were two of the most important tools a shepherd would carry when tending sheep. The rod was a short and thick stick that would be used to protect the flock by warding off potential threats. The staff had a crook that could be used to guide and rescue sheep from dangerous situations. So the rod was a tool used by shepherds to protect their flock from predators, while the staff was used to guide and direct the sheep along the right path. David is saying God's guidance and protection are akin to those of a shepherd. The rod and staff symbolizes God's watchful care, discipline when necessary and gentle guidance that keep believers in the right path. His rod and staff will protect us, guide us and comfort us. God will not abandon us in the valley of the shadow of darkness. He will guide us through us. So every time David looks at the rod and staff, he gets comforted because he knows the purpose of the rod and the staff. He's seen God using the rod and the staff. He himself will be using it as a shepherd. So he knows even though he is in the valley of the shadow of death, God will not abandon them. God will see them through. God will guide them. God will protect them. God will sustain them until they come through that valley. So as believers, we have our weapons too. God has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us. God has given us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. God has given us the Holy Spirit to reveal the mysteries of heaven to us. We have the promises in the Bible to hold on to. When we face difficulties, we go to the word and we profess the word, we confess the word, we pray the word. It's, prayer is another weapon for us. Fasting and praying is a powerful way. So we got different weapons and we need to use this tool. We, use, we need to use these weapons too. That's why it's important for us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit so that we are empowered to do the work of God. That's why it's important for us to be soaked in the word of God. So we are guided by the word. The Holy Spirit will guide us. That's why it's important for us to allow the Holy Spirit to lead our life. It's important to pray, to fast, to seek God daily. So the Holy Spirit will lead us in the right part, the part of righteousness. The Holy Spirit will protect us. The Holy Spirit will give us the gift of discernment. They're able to discern when people are trying to cheat us. People are in the corners. People are trying to lead us astray. Sometimes our own brothers and sisters in church can be trying to lead us astray. So we must be able to discern. So it's so important for us today. So this is the fourth important lesson, the weapons or tools for us to use while we are in the valley. So in conclusion today, Psalm 23 verse 4 reassures us that despite the trials we face, we can find solace, we can find peace, we can find strength in God's constant presence. This verse invites us challenges us to trust in him, leaning on his guidance and protection as we navigate the challenges and uncertainties of life. So I want to encourage you, I want to stir you up today to lean on God, lean on his guidance and protection as you go through the uncertainties of life in 2024. The key words and phrases within this verse, Psalms 23 verse 4, valleys, fear no evil, God's presence, rod and staff. All this combined to convey or give us a message loud and clear that God is the source of our comfort. God is the source of assurance, even in the midst of most difficult struggles, even in the midst of the shadow of death. Even in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. It teaches us 
how to overcome fear through faith, find comfort in God's guidance and trust in the good shepherds. So as we read this verse, I want to remind you today to applying this verse in your life and learn seven important lessons. Number one, don't go through the valleys alone. Some of us struggle through the valleys with our own strength, with our own might, with our own intelligence, and we fail miserably. Learn to rely on God. Learn to rely on God's guidance. Number two, trust or have faith in God's guidance. A sheep trusts that the shepherd has their best interests in mind. Similarly, we must trust the good shepherd. Psalms 23 verse 4 teaches us to surrender to him and recognize that what he's doing is the best for us. We must choose faith over fear. When confronted with challenges, uncertainties, intentionally choose to trust in God's presence and guidance rather than succumbing to fear and anxiety. This can involve repeating scriptural truths to yourself, engaging in worship, or simply reminding yourself of God's character and promises. Go to the Bible. Get strengthened by the verses. Worship God. Get strengthened by worship. Meditate and read the word about God's attributes and character. And you'll build up your faith. Seek God's presence in prayer. Reflect on the past experience of God's faithfulness. As you look at the staff and the rod. And what is done for David. And what he can do for you. Reflect back. On the great, great victories, the healing, the provision, and build your faith. Surround yourself with men and women who are strong in faith. Immerse yourself in the scripture. Immerse yourself in the promise of God. And be thankful to God. Be thankful to the people God brought in your path. Amen. God bless you. Shalom.